In this video, we'll be going over class and faction specific racials in World of Warcraft. First up, we'll be going over priest racials, because they were the only class with class racials until the Burning Crusade, and they varied wildly in ability and what they could do. We start off with the troll priest racial, Shadow Guard. This ability put a lightning shield like barrier around the caster. This shadowy shield had three charges and would consume one of these charges when attacked. It would then deal shadow damage back to the attacker. With no cooldown, you could easily keep this buff up forever, allowing for the priest to punish those attacking them with retaliating shadow damage. Even having the benefit of causing zero threat with this damage. For Shadow Priest, this racial was insanely powerful in PvP, procking multiple effects and even healing the priest, because after all, it was shadow damage. Although for healing priests, the mana would be far better spent elsewhere. Next, we have Desperate Prayer. This was available to humans and dwarves, and this racial was an instant cast heal that cost no mana. Which sounds pretty good, right? Well, it had some limitations. First, it had a 30 minute cooldown. And second, it was only self cast, so you could only use it on yourself. Although its 30 minute cooldown was later reduced to only 10 minutes, and it became affected by talents that buffed holy spells, and did not go through many changes. Star Shards, the Night Elf Priest Racial. This ability was a channel dot that dealt arcane damage, a damage type priest did not normally have access to. A 6 second channel that allowed you to burst some arcane damage into your enemy. Later changed to work more like Curse of Agony, causing its damage to slowly build up starting weak and ending strong, while also reducing its mana cost and increasing its damage. Next we have Touch of Weakness. This was the racial for the undead. The racial is as it sounds, the undead would cast the spell giving them a buff, and then on their next melee attack would consume the buff to apply a debuff to the enemy, while also dealing some shadow damage. This debuff was a curse that weakened the enemy's physical damage done. And well, I'm sure you can understand why this one was a bit odd. A priest doing melee damage? So they changed it in patch 1.10 to be when an enemy melees you instead of you having to melee them. Otherwise it was the same, although with a much lower mana cost. The only place this could really be seen as useful was in PvP, although the original one is a nice way to get a Curse of Weakness on a boss if you didn't have a Warlock, I guess. Next, we have Hex of Weakness. This was the second Priest Racial ability for Trolls. This ability, when cast on a target, would just reduce their damage by a small amount. Then in patch 1.10, it also reduced their healing by 20% for 2 minutes. And with no cooldown, this was quite a good ability. Great against bosses that could heal if you had no Mortal Strike Warriors and also against dual wielding classes. At least in its second version, its original without the reduced healing was not that great. It's also a great ability to use against other priests, as the only way to dispel it was with a mage, as it had the niche distinction of counting as a curse spell school, the only curse that priests were able to use. Next we have feedback. This spell was a human priest racial, which when cast would buff your weapon, giving it a chance to drain a fixed amount of mana from your enemy, and for each mana drained, you would take one damage. Although, like many of the others in patch 1.10, it got a redesign. It now surrounded the priest in a shield, and any spell against them would burn away mana and deal damage to them, allowing human priests to drain mana and damage anyone who cast spells on them. Enemies, that is. Next, we have Elune's Grace, the other Night Elf Priest ability. This was a buff they could cast on themselves that lasted three minutes, which just reduced the range physical damage they took by a small amount. Although, again, like other priest racials in patch 1.10, it was reworked, this time into more of a defensive cooldown, with a 15 second duration and a 5 minute cooldown, where it reduced range damage taken and increased dodge chance. It didn't stay like this for very long though, so just ignore the on-screen tooltip of this ability as it shows its last iteration. We'll go into its changes once we enter the TBC era. Next we go into Fear Ward, the Dwarf Priest only ability, which is pretty well known as the most powerful priest racial in Classic WoW, and was one of the reasons Alliance was the stronger faction in vanilla. Fear effects were very common in vanilla raids, and having your tank get feared is a quick way to wipe. So what Fear Ward did was with a 30 second cooldown and 10 minute duration, you could cause the next fear effect cast on the target to be ignored. And this was insane. It made many fights trivial by simply having a single dwarf priest or two. Your tank would never need to worry about suddenly turning their back to the boss for several seconds at a time, and simply tank as usual. Technically, the Horde had the option of the Shaman Tremor Totem to counter fears as well, but they were nowhere near as easy to use or good as Fear Ward, as Tremor Totem in Vanilla WoW 
would pulse its AoE fear cleanse every four seconds, and had to be thrown down right next to the tank because it was possible for them to just be feared out of its really short 20 yard radius. Lastly, we have Devouring Plague, a spell granted to undead priests. It was simply an instant cast 3 minute cooldown dot that dealt a high shadow damage, and healed the caster for the damage dealt, which I'm sure you can understand was great for shadow priests, who already have lots of shadow damage bonuses, and Vampiric Embrace, which allowed them to heal themselves of their shadow damage. Now, if you've ever wondered why priests were the only class in Vanilla WoW with racial specific spells, a good explanation on why comes from the Josh Corbett podcast done, where they interviewed Kevin Jordan, a lead class designer from Classic. We had this ambitious idea, of course, when you feel like you have endless time to do things, that we would have racial abilities for lots of different classes, you know, that there would be, you know, the Dwarf Warrior could do this, and the Torrent Warrior would be able to do this, and that kind of thing. But, uh, at the end of the day, once we realized how, you know, how much less time we actually had to work on this game, not 20 years, <laughs> we figured that it was, it was super, or I, I held the, the idea that it was super important on the priest, whereas we could cut the other classes um, in terms of racial abilities. And the reason it was so important on the priest was because it was trying to convey the culture of so many different races and their backgrounds and their connection to, a, you know, a, a type of religion or God that they might be, you know, invested in. So you know, a troll priest and an undead priest is very different than a dwarf priest. This podcast also debunked the whole notion that this priest was meant to be a tank, which is a pretty common rumor in the community. So I'll just play that clip right here as well. Yeah, it was never intended that the discipline tree be a tank spec. Uh, that was just a retroactive thing. I, I was brainstorming with some people that we were chatting with. Now on to the Burning Crusade and the intro of the Drenai and Blood Elves, who could both be priests, as well as paladins. Originally, the Paladin was a class only for Alliance, where the Horde got the Shaman. But with the Burning Crusade, they swapped, adding Shamans to Alliance and Paladins to Horde. And so to keep a bit of that faction flavor, they added faction-specific seals for the Paladins, one for Alliance and one for Horde. The Seal of Vengeance was the Alliance seal introduced in the Burning Crusade. This seal was pretty simple. Every time you did a melee attack while the seal was active, you had a chance to apply a dot to the enemy, that dealt holy damage over 12 seconds, stacking up to 5 times. The seal lasted for 30 seconds, but with no cooldown, instant cast, and only a small mana cost, it wasn't that much of an issue to reapply it. Another thing you could do was blast the enemy for a large amount of holy damage based on the amount of applications of holy vengeance when you hit the enemy with judgment. The seal was very useful for tanks, as it allowed you to apply dots to targets to generate threat, even during a threat wipe. Also very useful against rogues, as it would break them out of Vanish if they tried to get away. Seal of Blood was the seal available only to Horde Paladins, at the time just Blood Elves. This dealt far more damage than Seal of Vengeance, the Alliance counterpart, and this seal added holy damage to all your melee attacks, but the Paladin would take 10% of the damage dealt to their health, and casting Judgment with this seal would instantly deal a large amount of holy damage to the target which would also deal about 33% of the damage back to the Paladin when they used it. So as you can see, the seal was meant to do a lot of damage, but at the cost of self-damage. And so I'm sure you could see the comparisons. The Alliance seal was far better for tanking, while this seal was far better for DPS, especially as it dealt damage based on the weapon damage, which of course, two-handers hit a lot harder than one-handers. Fun fact, the seal's holy damage counted as a second melee hit, so it could be blocked, dodged, and parried. Now for the priest racials in the Burning Crusade. First we have Alun's Grace, which got reworked to work like what the tooltip on screen actually says, to now reduce the chance to be hit by melee and ranged attacks by 20% for 15 seconds with a 3 minute cooldown, instead of granting dodge chance on a longer 5 minute cooldown like it used to. A straight 20% chance to cause physical attacks to miss was quite the improvement and turned it into more of a legitimate defensive cooldown. Next, Fear Ward got given to Drenai as well as being available to Dwarves, and then in patch 2.3 it was right out removed from Dwarf and Drenai as a racial ability, and was now given to all priests, which made it a baseline ability for nearly the rest of WoW until the ability was removed in Legion. Star Shards was also changed, no longer ramping up in damage, it dealt the same damage the entire duration, and it was no longer a channeled ability, now simply a dot with a 15 second duration, 30 second cooldown, and dealt arcane damage every 3 seconds making it the only arcane school dot that priests ever had access to. Now onto the new priest abilities. First, we have Consume Magic. This was the new priest racial introduced with the Blood Elves. This ability, with a 2 minute cooldown, dispelled one beneficial magical effect from the caster, giving themselves a large chunk of mana. 
This was great for long fights, as removing simple self buffs like Inner Fire or Power Word Fortitude could be used to gain mana when needed the most at the end of a big fight, when mana is low and the min max of those buffs doesn't matter. Especially since it did not care about the rank of the ability. You could simply cast rank 1 Inner Fire, then consume it for the full value. Or Touch of Weakness, which was originally the undead only priest racial, now available to Blood Elves as well. Symbol of Hope, the new priest racial given to Drenai, with a 5 minute cooldown and an instant cast, this gave your party a buff, giving the mana every 5 seconds for 15 seconds, which was a pretty decent mana return racial that also benefited your party. Drenai racials seem to have a theme of being helpful to party members, as their heroic presence racial gave their party a passive 1% hit buff, and their gift of the Naru racial heal could be cast on other players really breaking the mold of most racials being self-buffs only. With Fear Ward becoming available to all priests, Chastise was given in its place to Draenei and Dwarves. A 30 second cooldown instant cast ability, it dealt a decent chunk of holy damage to an enemy, while also disorienting them for 2 seconds. It also generated very low threat, but only worked on humanoids, although in the very next patch of 2.4 it got changed from a disorient to a root, and had its cooldown removed. And before we move on to Wrath of the Lich King, let's talk about Bloodlust and Heroism. These spells were abilities that gave all party members 30% melee and ranged attack speed, as well as spellcasting speed for 40 seconds. Now remember, this only worked on party members, not the whole raid. So just the Shaman and four of its party allies. This spell had a 10 minute cooldown and no Sata debuff, meaning for every Shaman you had, they could cast this ability every 10 minutes. And it was quite powerful and I can see Shaman stacking probably being a thing in TBC Classic. Fun fact, Heroism actually cost less to train than Bloodlust did for the first patch of the Burning Crusade, despite the fact that it was literally the same ability, just with a different name. And now, onto Wrath of the Lich King. First, we will quickly finish off Bloodlust and Heroism. They got slightly reworked, they now affected everyone in the entire raid instead of just the party. And they now only had a 5 minute cooldown, but to make this not insanely broken, they added the Sated debuff, which causes a player to be unable to be affected by Bloodlust or Heroism for 5 minutes, after receiving the effect of those spells. So you could no longer stack Shamans in one group to grant your highest DPS more uptime on Bloodlust. And sadly, this is when they removed Priest Racials, as they wanted players to have more freedom to choose what race they wanted their Priest to be. So with this change, they made a few of the Racials baseline. A Desperate Prayer became a talent in the Holy Tree and had a much shorter cooldown, it's now just a standard baseline ability today. Symbols of Hope was renamed to Hymn of Hope and made available to all priests. Chastise was removed from the game, although it did come back as Holy Word Chastise and Cataclysm and became a staple of their Holy Tree as their specific damage dealing spell. Devouring Plague was made available to all priests and stayed in the game until it was removed in Legion, although being re added in Shadowlands. And the rest were removed, which includes Star Shards, Touch of Weakness, Hex of Weakness, Feedback, Elune's Grace, Shadow Guard, and Consume Magic. And while Priests had their special unique benefit removed in Wrath of the Lich King, for some reason Paladins were special and kept theirs. Sort of. And so in Wrath of the Lich King, they got altered slightly, as well as sort of new seals being added to the racial seal list. Seal of Vengeance with Wrath of the Lich King procced with every single swing, as well as its damage being affected by attack and spell power, as well as having its duration increased to 30 minutes like all other seals. This made the ability much more manageable and much more powerful. Then in 3.2 it was slightly reworked. Auto attacks and Hammer of Righteousness place a debuff on the target, and while this seal is active, each melee swing on the ability, excluding judgment, that hit the target to dealt a percentage of weapon damage as holy maxing out at 33% with 5 stacks of the seal. This holy damage dealt double crit damage as well, unlike normal dots. And for Seal of Blood, not much change really. It still did extra damage at the cost of HP, but also got a 30 minute duration added just like Seal of Vengeance. Paladins then got two brand new racial seals. Our first new seal is this Seal of Martyr for Alliance. This seal was the exact same as Seal of Blood. It caused your melee attack to deal 27 additional holy damage, but lose health equal to 10% of the damage inflicted, and also deal bonus holy damage when casting Judgment at the cost of 33% damage done to your health. Our next seal is the Seal of Corruption for Horde. This seal, just like the Seal of Vengeance, applied a dot to the enemy that stacked up to 5 times, 
while also causing your attacks to deal bonus holy damage, and also casting Judgment to dealt a large amount of holy damage, increased by 10% for each stack of seal you had on the target. So in Wrath of the Lich King, they seemingly wanted to remove the special feature of Paladins, and gave both factions both seals. But with a simple rename, as Seal of Martyr and Seal of Blood were literally the exact same, as were Seal of Corruption and Seal of Vengeance. As then in patch 3.2, they right out removed Seal of the Martyr and Seal of Blood, likely not liking the playstyle of Paladins sacrificing their own health to increase their DPS. While it is a cool ability, it built some bad habits of over-relying on your healers to keep you healed so that you can do optimal DPS, and it would straight kill you on fights with increased damage to things. So while we did still have racial seals, they were the exact same at this point, but with just different names. Kind of like Bloodlust and Heroism. And then in the Cataclysm, the racial seals were removed, and Bloodlust and Heroism stayed the same. Exact same spell, but with different names for each faction. Although Time Warp and Ancient Hysteria got added. Other ways to gain this haste effect, Time Warp for Mages for both factions, and Ancient Hysteria from Hunters. And that's it for Clash Racials, as they were never used again. Although, something to mention, in the coming Burning Crusade Classic, these seals are being given to both factions in order to better balance the factions at the start. Now, both Horde and Alliance will have access to Seal of Vengeance and Seal of Blood. And that's it for the end of the video. Watch the playlist and all the other history videos. Also, like, favorite, and subscribe, and offer a blood sacrifice to the Blood Gods.